Hey guys, hope you're keeping well. We are off to Teesside Autodrome, Middlesbrough. No bloody way, man. Yes, bloody way. It is home of the British 24 hour race and it is the weekend for the 2023 British 24 hour car race. So we're heading over there now. We are not racing this year unfortunately, no team. Aiming to try and put that back together for next year. However, we've got the tools in the van, we've got the lap timer, the car helmet and the karting gear. So hopefully we can get out and spin a couple of laps in practice. Uh, you never know what happens during the race, some people get injured, might get sick, might not turn up, you never know. So we might get a, we might get a stint in the race, we're just going to go along, see some friends, do some spattering, see what happens and take you folks along for the ride. So I hope you enjoy it, we'll check back in when we get there. So there's a map of the full track that's used for the British 24 hour race, and let's have a quick onboard lap and show you round. So here we are starting the lap, just approaching the start finish line. Once we go over the start finish line, we're into the D, which requires smooth throttle application to carry the speed all the way through into this left hand kink. Easy in the dry, can be tricky in the wet and run wide there. Up to rib bend, tricky braking zone with a big bump, hunts up as a rear of the car, big bump on the inside curb, being reprofiled for this year. Try not to be too greedy on the right hand side and sacrifice a bit of that for a good drive through the left up the hill. Probably the most important corner on the track there, the right hand at the top of the hill to carry all the speed down the straight. Now you've got an opportunity to check your fuel tank, release your fingers, just get a bit of a rest into the wiggles. Again, easy flat in the dry, tricky in the wet, hard braking for hairpin one. Hug the apex, don't let it run out too wide as you want to get the best drive out of this hairpin two. You sacrifice the left hand hairpin for a better drive out of the right hand hairpin because you're on the throttle for so long. Round the south bank corner, easy in the dry, again tricky corner in the wet and then late, late, late on the brakes into hairpin three. You don't want to run too wide again there but it is a great opportunity, overtaking opportunity. You want to sacrifice the hairpin three for a great drive out of hairpin four all the way down this straight down to the start finish line. So here we go guys, good old Great Britain as usual. The motorway is all jammed up, too many cars, too much traffic. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to just explain a little bit about my karting background. So when I was younger, I'd never done any, any go-karting at all. I was more into watching bike racing and um, had a small 50cc and got into bikes with my dad. And then when I actually went to college to train as a mechanical engineer, there was a, a guy working there. I think it all a man thing, painting the curbstones. Oh, that's, that's, that's one next that. idea. Yeah, that I looks really smart. I need call it. I think Craig could be. Pilchers Ben. Who run an enrichment program for the students, getting them involved in go karting. And we used to go to the local track and get an experience of what it's like to drive a go kart. That really set the bug going. And from then, I then done a lot of higher kart racing, local sprint championships, a little bit of Club 100, that kind of stuff and then went actually back to the college to teach and the gentleman was still there teaching himself. Um, his name was Drew Howard, Andrew Howard, and we become very, very close friends uh, whilst, we, whilst I was there teaching. And we then continued to run this karting program where we would take the students away on the annual European 24 hour race. So been to Le Mans, Eindhoven, uh, the Isle of Man, 
Spa, been all over the place doing 24 hour races and of course the UK and Teesside. So he then very suddenly and unfortunately passed away and then since then I carried the team on by rebranding it under his initials which is where the DHR comes from. Now unfortunately to try and grow the team and take it to the next level there is actually a very popular and well established team DHR that already exists within the karting world. So that's the main reason we're going to try and rebrand this under the Comrade Motorsport banner. Uh, since then all we've really done is the uh, the BPEC Pro Kart Endurance which consists of six hour and 24 hour races for the whole overall championship. Uh, it's a fantastic brilliant karting event. One because of the track time you get for the cost of it once you're into a team but mainly because of the the teamwork that's involved. It's not just driving the cart fast. It's communicating amongst all your team members. It is um, the pit work to make sure your pit stops are good, to make sure your preparation for every little eventuality is covered. Somebody on the radio talking all the time. Hopefully this weekend will give you a little bit of an insight as to how much actually goes into even completing a 24 hour race, let alone getting a good result. So yeah, whilst we're sitting in traffic, I thought we'd just give you a little bit of a rundown of, of why we enjoy the endurance racing so much. And you never know, we might catch an accident on camera. So welcome along guys. This is the 2023 British 24 hour kart race. This is the jewel in the crown for the pro kart calendar really. Uh, we're at Teesside Autodrome. Costa del Northeast, and the uh, the weather's looking absolutely horrific. So we've had flooding all weekend, and the first half of the race looks like this is going to be it, and then hopefully dry up in the second half. So as I say, it's terrible, absolutely everywhere. Hopefully the race doesn't get cancelled. It did actually get cut short last year, so. This is the jewel in the pro karting calendar, the 24 hour kart race. Very much like Le Mans, we've got different classes. Uh, we've got owner driver classes and we've got higher kart classes. So there's 35 owner drivers this year and a total grid of 88. So remaining are made up with uh, the higher karts themselves from Teesside. Uh, the classes in the owner drivers are Elite, Super Pro, Pro and Clubman. And they are identified by uh, the background numbers on the cart. So yellow is elite, red is super pro, blue is pro and black is clubman. So again, like the proper Le Mans, it is very much a skill to get through the traffic. It's part of endurance cart racing. So we just come back to the van to get a little bit of respite from the weather. A lovely, beautiful British summer. Um, the guys are trying their best to clear the track at the minute, but the, the start has been delayed for the time being. So we're just, they're just going to make a decision on whether to try and start a bit later, cancel it, postpone it, um, or maybe even run a 12 hour event instead of a 24. So we're just waiting to see what happens with that. Because they are trying their best to clear the track, but it's a bit of an impossible task with the weather that's coming in. It's, uh, they're not really making much progress at the minute. So. The 24 hour race should be Saturday, 12 noon Saturday start until 12 noon on the Sunday. 24 hours including your pit stops. Uh, the qualifying they've already had on the Saturday morning this morning. The usual protagonists are at the front of that. The Elite guys in 43, Kart 43, the MS guys and 113 the Red Graphics guys. Both of those teams sporting some really, really quick drivers this year. Uh, the, the UK 24 hour race runs as part of the 24 hour karting series and also part of the overall championship for the BPEC championship, the, the British Pro Kart Endurance Championship. So that consists of 24 hour and six hour events. So I'll put links in the description to the, all the information on their websites for that. The timing's done via Alpha Live timing and they also do an Alpha Live stream on YouTube for the 24 hour event. So I'll pop some links in for that as well. And then in, in that live timing page, you can clearly see the different classes of Elite, Super Pro, Pro and Clubman. 
So those four classes run separate to the higher carts. The higher carts are an individual thing and quite a lot slower per lap. So as explained before, part of the big challenge of this race is to get through the traffic efficiently without damaging the cart, especially as the higher carts are a lot heavier. And if you do have an incident with them, they're obviously in their own race and it's your job as a quicker driver to do the overtaking safely and smoothly without causing an incident. Uh, if you've potentially come across somebody unaware and you do have an incident, you are more likely as an owner driver to come off with a bent cart. Secret to this race, to getting a result is it's not really an endurance race anymore, it is a 24 hour sprint race. Uh, you've got to have a good team of people, good team of guys around you, not just in the cart driving but in the pits. They're just as important as the people driving the cart. People on the radios, the communication, when you're out there at 3 o'clock in the morning and it's dark and it's raining and you're wet, soaking wet through, having somebody on the radio keeping you company is just as important as somebody in the pits cooking the bacon sandwiches so when you come in you've got something to eat. So it's a big, big team effort which is why I love the event so much and love the endurance racing so much because it's not just down to have putting a quick driver in a well set up car. So here we are guys, it's finally stopped raining, it's now one o'clock so we're just going to have a wander up to the paddock and see what they're deciding. Uh, one advantage of turning up to a racetrack when it is raining is you find a perfect parking spot out of the water. Unfortunately these poor souls, not so lucky. Last we we'll just have a quick look at the pit stop process. So over there we can see the weighbridge underneath the tent. So every time you come in off the pits, so you have to go on the weighbridge, make sure you hit your minimum weight, switch your engines off and go across to your fuel bay. Over there you can fuel up. You then have to push the car around through this chicken run, around to this other side to do your driver changes, lead changes and restart your engines. Folks, up at Hairpin Free, ready for the start. They're just finishing pumping the last bit of water out of the track, hopefully. Still aiming for a 2.30 start. Le Mans style start. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get down on the grid to show you how, uh, how nicely presented all the carts are, but hopefully, we'll be in the right spot to see a bit of action on the first lap. Oh, and here he is, Hairpin Free. Look at the racing line, he's punted him straight off. Whop, up, 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 up. Can't pull out there, mate.
So it looks like we've got 113, followed by 31 on the first lap. You can see quite a field of carts. First few laps over at 24 is basically you can't win it, but you can certainly win it. You just need to try and get a first few laps under your belt, stay out of trouble, keep it clean, and get yourself into a nice rhythm for the stint. Uh, the two teams I think are going to be vying for overall win this race today 113 and 43. 113 is in the lead currently with Jess Alexander. Uh, 43 uh, is currently in third place with Josh Malkus. So I think those two, as the race progresses, are going to be fighting for the overall victory. Let's let the race settle down and see what happens.
We're about an hour and 40 minutes in now. Uh, first round of pit stops seems to have been done. Bit of confusion over the timing and the whole start of the race being late. It looks like it's going to be run over 23 hours now instead of 24 because uh, there's an issue with keeping staff working that long. Uh, 43 is in the lead from 113 um, by 0.3 of a second at the minute after the first round of stops. We've got 959. SMJC Pro in fourth overall, leading the Pro class, and Team Tate 31 leading the Super Pro class in fifth overall. And the highest club and runner at the minute is 159 in J rating in 13th overall. Apologies to the guys doing the uh, higher cart driving. I don't know any of the teams or the names or the classes that they're racing in. I'm, because I've always been owner driver here, that's all I've ever really focused on. So sorry if I'm not filling you in with those guys. Um, it's worth noting as well that even though it's raining, all of these all of these races are still on slick tyres. So they don't change tyres in this, always running slick. So we're just going to wander down to Rib Bend and see what's going on down there. folks we have uh, come for a little bit of respite back in the van weather's closed in again as we can see uh, we went through the first round of pit stops um, a few little bits of drama uh, a couple of teams with a few engine problems a few loose NASA panels things like that but it was still uh, the battle between 113 and 43 for the main overall lead of the race and then high drama with 113 having an incident with a hire car going through the wiggles into the first hairpin huge huge accident i uh, had to get the ambulance on track and hopefully she's she's okay um the, the uh, red graphics guys have managed to actually weld the front of the cart back up and get it back out there uh 24 hour race you never know what's going to happen but they might well be a driver down now for the rest of it so so the rain's coming back in we're just sitting in here keeping up to date on the alpha live stream and we're going to see what happens over the next hour or so it's been eventful so far to say the least
So guys, I'm coming to the outside of the South Bank corner. I hope you can hear me all right. Uh, we've got a little bit more drama with the Apollo warning. The M Racing uh, 311 car had to be totally reframed as it had snapped and yoked on the chassis. So it's had a totally new chassis built up within about half an hour from the guys. So an absolutely amazing job there from the guys in the Apollo warning. go run through a few things for you guys so the higher cars themselves have one main stop during the race well I believe they get to change a pair of tires and the set of brake pads and they have a full service on the car the owner drivers basically you normally run three sets of tires and a set of brake pads through the 24 so by the time you come in to do your tyres, you'll probably be doing your pads at the same time and whilst you're doing the tyres, you've got the chance of a good look over the car, check the chain tension, etc, etc. Other than that, it's just regular stops about every hour and a half. Um, you can pit to get out of sequence to try and uh, make sure the fuel bay is clear when you're coming in for pits. There's a lot more to it than just driving the car fast, so you've got to have a solid team around you, as I said before. Another thing to take in to bear in mind is a lot of these guys will be doing double or even triple stints. So when it's raining or when it's wet and the track knowledge and track conditions is king, rather than lo losing time around the lap putting somebody else in on a, a pit stop, you can get some of these drivers doing three, four and a half hours um, with double or triple stints. So you've got to think what that takes out of you to drive one of these carts for that long. It is a, it's a very serious sport. A lot of these guys who are racing in the owner drivers, if they had had the stars aligned, they are more than capable of racing in car championships. So it's not that the um, it's not that they're karting because that's as high as their level goes. It's more that it's a pure form of motorsport, and they get as much of fun and enjoyment out of racing these cars. Really close wheel action is what they would do in cars. So a really high level national british championship this BPEC series so guys we're now five minutes uh, five minutes five hours 25 minutes into the race not even the length of a normal six hour event uh, number 43 ms soco select still in the lead got a lap over number 42 ms lucas in the lead uh, 31 team tate is still first in the super class followed in fourth position overall followed in fifth position overall by smjc 959 uh, who are first in pro and then in eighth position overall is still urbn2 uh, first in clubman so it's been a bit of a race of attrition we've recently just lost uh, rosso corsa i believe it is 133 they've snapped a stub on the right hand front another incident with a high car <laughs> So it seems that a lot of these people are forgetting that this is a race to just take your time getting past a higher car. So second lost on a lap here or there is not worth half an hour in the pits or even the end of the race. It's a real race of attrition. So now it's a case of seeing how all the pit stops play out and really what action goes on through the night and who can make it through the night. 
So we're going to try and get some tea, have a little rest, and then we'll come back and join it later on. So guys, we're back in the van, a uh, little sit rep. It is 10 o'clock at night, just over seven hours in. Uh, 43 MS Soko Select were leading, uh, but they were getting closed down quite quickly by 42 MS Lucas, which is quite surprising because uh, at the wheel of the 43 was uh, Dan Crosley, who has done some mega stints around here before. So obviously the 42 cart was just hooked up and reading them in, got the gap down to under 30 seconds they then pitted uh whether i'm not i've not been able to keep up with all the different pit stop strategies so i don't know who's where with what uh, strategy with pit stops we just have to wait to the end of the race for it to play out um in the meantime uh 17 nexus has got past 42 so they're nose to tail currently lapping but it's nexus leading overall with 42 ms lucas behind and MS Soko Select 43 in third place. I've just had some dinner, courtesy of the Teesside Canteen. Beef stew and chips with millionaire shortbread and coffee. Very nice too, thank you very much. Um, I thought I was hallucinating for a second because I saw a purple dinosaur down by the side of the racetrack, but it turns out it was actually real, so no, no hallucinations there. And uh, I'm just going to go and grab myself a shower, get myself ready for the night and see what occurs as we go on through the night. This is now the point where we, the race has settled down a little bit. There's been a few incidents and accidents. Now is just keep it together through the night when it's dark, as long as it doesn't rain um, and you have no mechanical failures, you see who comes out the other side and then that's going to obviously decide the outcome of the race mainly this is what now where where it all happens so yeah once we're uh, once we're into the depths of the night we'll get some more footage if we can
it's 3 a.m. in the morning doing the night shift. Just over 12 hours in. Uh, a bit of high drama earlier on through the pit stop sequences. Uh, we had more carts breaking. Uh, unfortunately, number 44 MS Harris also had a bent chassis, so that's another one retired from a bent chassis with an incident with a high cart. Uh, currently we've got number 42 in this Lucas leading, the race has settled down, they've got a lap over 17 Nexus Sport in the elite class in the overall lead. X-Ray is leading the Super Pro class. So a little bit more bad luck there for x Racing. they were in the lead of the Super Pro class. Come in for tyres, done the tyres, come back in for two motors, suspected water in the fuel and then an incident with a higher cart meant they've had to come back column both track rods fantastic job done by Apollo again super super quick but just dropped them out of the lead of the super pro class so let's see what they can claw their way back up to Alexander returned back to the track. The word from the horse's mouth is that it is a badly sprained foot and ankle and up to three weeks on crutches but nothing broken. So that's good news to hear that. Uh, unfortunately, honestly thought this year would be the year for the red racing team. Given the speed she has in the wet and the conditions he started the race, it just obviously wasn't meant to be this year. The race is still going on. Like I say, it's settled into a nice rhythm now through the night. And it's all about just keeping out of trouble now through the, through the rest of the night and waiting until the sun comes up. It's 5.30 in the morning, we've made it through the night, still pounding round, still many hours left to go. Um, I'm going to go and get myself a shower, get my head down for a couple of hours and uh, have a look at what, how the land lies once we wake up. It's been a night of drama, basically if you keep your nose out of trouble you'll be doing okay. Been uh, strip chains, rockets, bent bumpers, axles, engines blown up, you name it, it's happened. So. Uh, it's now time, hopefully, to just see it for the end of the race. Night night! Good morning guys. So, a couple of hours sleep. We have now got three and a half hours of the race left to run. We've still got MS Soco Select number 43 in the overall lead in Elite from Nexus Racing. The first uh, Super Pro is 77 offline in fifth position overall. He's only just taken that position in within the last half an hour from Team Keen. It looks like they were potentially trying to stretch their fuel stops and ran out of fuel on track, so they were leading the class. So there's been a change of lead for class there. Uh, down in 10th place is the leader of the Pro class, R Academy. And in 15th place, the leader of Clubman, Urban 2. Uh, they've been in that position leading that class for a long, long time. So sun shines out here at Teesside now. We're going to have a wander up to the track and uh, watch this till the end now.
So here we go then guys, last hour of the race. Everything's looking pretty settled. All the positions in the top four classes stayed pretty stable for a little while. Uh, Team Keen had some more unfortunate issues with the steering, which has dropped them even further down out of the top three, I believe. So yeah, we'll see how it see how it all pans out in the next hour, and hopefully catch the finish. So that's it guys, 2023 British 24 hour rate, kart race has finished, overall winners, um, as you can see here, number 43 MS Soco Select, serial 24 hour winners, done it again in the elite class, three laps over Nexus Racing and MS Lucas, followed by MS JSR and a nice recovery drive there from 113 Red Graphics TTM, back up to fifth place overall. A fantastic result for X Racing, sixth overall, first in Super Pro class. Great comeback after the issues through the night. Uh, was having a good battle with Team Keen, but unfortunately Team Keen had a few issues in the last sort of third of the race. So they dropped down. Race View Academy 85, ninth overall, first in Pro and Urban 2, 14th overall, first in Clubman. A worthy mention there in 21st, 3311. Three, more racing after having to actually completely reframe the cart as a brilliant recovery drive the 21st overall so lots of other teams in there that i haven't mentioned i'm afraid there's too many teams and too much going on to keep on top of everything there but hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into what you really what goes on in, and what's involved in these 24-hour races it really is a war of attrition and you can go thinking you're fully prepared year after year and something else will bite you so it's, uh, it's a brilliant experience. If you've never done it, try and get involved. And hopefully you've all enjoyed it, guys. Take care. We'll see you soon.